Welcome back. This is Liam Douglas with the Aperture Assassin channel on YouTube. And today we're going to be going over the fifth group of menu tabs on the Canon EOS R. As I said before, it also pertains to pretty much all Canon cameras, whether they're DSR or mirrorless. There will be some items in this menu that are specific to the EOS R, uh, but most of them will still apply to your camera. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Okay, so moving in this video to the orange tab, uh, series of tabs or rust color, depending on what you want to call them. The first item we have on tab one is exposure level increments. Now, this is where you can change your exposure level increments between one third and half a stop. Um, this is mostly a personal preference thing. I prefer to have mine set on one third stops because it gives me a little bit more control. You may prefer half stops. It's like I said, a personal preference thing. ISO speed setting increments, they can also be adjusted from between one third stops and full stops. Um, again, I prefer to have as much control as possible over my settings. The bracketing auto cancel off or on, this just determines whether the camera will automatically exit bracketed shooting mode after you do your first set of bracketed shots. If you want to continue to do bracketed shooting, then you want to disable the auto cancel option. Next is bracketing sequence. Now this is where you can set your bracketing exposure sequence. You have zero comma minus comma plus. And then you have minus zero and plus, and then plus zero and minus. Now, all this determines is what order it's going to do the bracketed sequences in. So in other words, if you chose the first option, which my camera is currently set for, it would do a normal exposure first, then it would do an underexposed shot, then it would do an overexposed shot. This way, uh, this mode is the one that most people tend to use, and it's going to do the underexposed first the one right in the middle, perfect exposure second, and then overexposed third. Um, and then the last option is to do the overexposed first, the neutral in the second shot, and then the underexposed last. So again, it's a personal preference thing, but most photographers tend to shoot their underexposed, overexposed, or underexposed, neutral, and then overexposed in that sequence. But that's up to you. Number of bracketed shots, you can change it from three to two shots, five shots, or seven shots, depending on what your needs are. Um, the bracketed shooting is used mostly when a photographer wants to achieve what's called HDR or high dynamic range. You'll take three or more bracketed shots, and then in a program like Photoshop, you blend them together so that you get a fantastic exposure and lots of details where you have maximum details in the shadows, maximum details in the highlights, and so on. The safety shift, off or on. Now, I'm going to hit the menu button here so you can read all the details. Uh, safety shift, shutter speed and aperture to prevent under or overexposure in shutter aperture priority. AE modes, manual settings are automatically overridden to enable standard exposure. If you set it for ISO speed uh, to prevent under or overexposure in program shutter priority, aperture priority, AE modes, ISO speed is automatically changed to enable standard exposure. The maximum and minimum ISO speed for safety shift with ISO speed are the value set in the automatic ISO range. So in other words, with the safety shift enabled, if you use an aperture or shutter priority mode, it doesn't matter what aperture or shutter speed you select. If the camera determines that they're not going to give you a good exposure, it will automatically override your manual settings with the best settings to use for the scene. Um, and there you see you can change the order. Um, TV, AV, you can have it off or you can set it for ISO mode where it controls just the ISO and not the shutter speed or the aperture. Okay, so same exposure for new aperture is the last item on tab one. And again, I'll hit the info so you can read this as well. In manual exposure shooting, ISO and shutter speed are automatically adjusted to maintain the maximum exposure level if the aperture value is changed by switching lenses, adding an extender or zooming. Note that when the ISO speed reaches the expanded ISO speeds and high-low set an ISO speed, the camera may adjust shutter speed to maintain exposure. 
when the ISO speed reaches the expanded ISO speed of ISO speed shutter speed, or at the min-max shutter speed, the camera may adjust shutter speed or ISO speed to maintain a good exposure. And of course, you see your different settings for that. Um, you can have it based on ISO, based on ISO and shutter, or based on shutter only. Moving on to the second tab, you can set shutter speed range here. You can set a lowest and highest maximum shutter that you'll allow your camera to have. The ones that are set in here right now are the defaults for the camera. 30 seconds is the maximum, the slowest shutter you could have on this camera. 8,000 is the highest, so nothing to mess with there. I leave it that way. Some people like to lower theirs. Um, maybe you don't want to do any long exposures longer than 15 seconds. Then you could change the 30 to 15, and you don't want to use the shutter speed any faster than 2,000. Then you could change the maximum to 2,000, um, of course. Uh, set aperture range. This is where you can set the minimum and maximum aperture that your lenses can do. Uh, minimum max aperture is 1.0. I don't currently own any lenses that can do 1.0. The closest I have is the RF 50 millimeter 1.2 L. Um, minimum aperture of 91. I didn't. I don't even think there's any lenses that go to that minimum aperture. I'm not sure why it's so high. Uh, most lenses max out at 22 or 32. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change mine so the max is 32. Um, AE lock meter mode after focus. This allows you to change the AE lock metering mode after focus is achieved. You can set it to evaluative metering, partial metering, spot metering, or center weighted average. I like to keep mine on evaluative. Just a personal preference thing. On tab three, dial direction during shutter and aperture priority modes. You can change, you can reverse the dial direction. Um, the normal mode is minus to the left, plus to the right. You can flip it so it's plus to the right, minus to the left, or vice versa, depending on how you're looking at the screen. Uh, control ring rotation, again, this won't apply to your camera unless you have an EOS R, RP, R5, or R6. Control ring rotation, again, you can reverse the direction of the control ring on the lenses or on the control ring lens adapter that allows you to use EF lenses on an RF mount body. The focus ring rotation, you can reverse the direction of that as well. I like to leave it to the default. That's what feels natural for me. But if you have third-party lenses where the focusing goes in the opposite direction, then you could configure the camera so that your Canon lenses would also go in the same direction just to keep things uniform. RF lens MF focus ring sensitivity. This... Um, just allows you to control the sensitivity of the manual focus ring, uh, varies with rotation speed, and you can also set it to link to rotation degree, either one. The fourth tab is uh, where you can customize your buttons. Um, this is the area of your Canon menu you're going to want to go into um, if you want to modify your buttons. So shutter button, half press, metering starts. Um, you can set it to metering and AF start or set it to AE lock while button is pressed. And uh, I have mine already set the way I want it. You could also change the movie button. You can reassign that to a different button based on the one that's highlighted on the display of the camera. The dial function for all of these you can change. Again, I don't mess with any of those on my camera. I leave most of the stuff pretty much standard. Custom dials, this will allow you to change um, your dials on the camera. So the main dial, which is the one that sits upright right behind your shutter button, by default, it controls. And let me get in there. There we go. Uh, shutter speed, um, you could change it to control aperture when you're in manual mode, or you can set it to disabled, no function. I leave mine set to shutter speed. And the large dial on the top of the EOS R can be used to control your aperture. And then the control ring can also be programmed on the R mount Canon cameras. And you can set it to anything you want. You can set it to change aperture. 
You can set it to change shutter speed, ISO, exposure compensation, uh, aperture value. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. These two back here are hold meter button, and you can change the aperture and shutter speed. And then without the hold meter button, you can do aperture and shutter speed by choosing these modes without the down arrow. You can set it to ISO speed, exposure compensation, or off. I leave mine set to the aperture with hold meter button. That's just what I, I personally like. Customize the MF or multifunction bar. Again, if you don't have an EOS R, you will not have this touch bar on the back of the camera that's highlighted there in the screen image. Um, some people like it. Some people totally hate it. Um, I currently don't have mine assigned. Sometimes I'll assign it to control my ISO settings, um, but most of the time I don't use it. If you don't have an EOS R, then you won't have this option, of course. And then the last option here is to clear customized settings. This will erase all of your customized dial, menu bar settings, and custom button settings if you decide you want to revert everything back. The fifth tab uh, first item allows you to add cropping information. Um, you can set it to off or six by six aspect ratio, three by four or four by five, six by seven, 10 to 12, uh, 10, 12, which is 5.6 and five, seven. Those are the options that you have. Most of Canon's cameras can do that as well. As far as I know, it's not particular to the EOS R or or special to the R, I should say. Default erase option. You can change this if you want to, um, but I leave mine set to use the trash can button um, to erase. Um, you can change it to other things, as you see here. Uh, release shutter without lens. I have this turned on uh, because I do have some completely manual lenses that have no electronics in them. And if you don't have this option turned on, you cannot take pictures with a manual only lens. By default, it is disabled. When you get your camera from the factory, you need to go in and turn it on if you have any manual only lenses you wanna use, like a Holga toy lens or a lens baby lens or something like that. Uh, retract lens on power off. I have this enabled because my RF mount 35 millimeter IS lens, um, when I use that on this camera and I turn the camera off, if the, if the barrel of the lens has extended out for focus, it'll automatically retract it back in. So less risk of dinging it on something and damaging the barrel, the part of the barrel that's exposed. And you can also on the last item on the fifth tab, add your IPTC information. Um, and if I turn on this, you see, you see it says to add IPTC information to images during shooting, connect to a computer and use Canon app or software to register, register IPTC information on your camera. That's the EOS utility that I was talking about in the previous video. And the last tab we have for the orange or rust colored menu is to clear all custom functions. Um, if you go in there and do that, that will erase all of your customized dials, cus the custom functions on the, on the menu function bar. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Clear all custom function settings for customized buttons, dials, and menu bar will be retained. Um, wait a minute. That's a little bit confusing here. Let me see. Clear all custom functions settings for customized buttons, customized dials, and customized multifunction bar will be retained. Um, and that is the last one on that. So that is going to wrap up the fifth menu in this series. All right. So that is going to wrap up the orange menu tabs in the Canon EOS R and Canon cameras in general, whether they're DSR or mirrorless. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please comment below if you have any questions or suggestions, or if you appreciate the video and it helped you, that would be much appreciated. Please give a sub to the channel, like, and share the video. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when the next video drops. For Aperture Assassin, this is Liam Douglas. Have a great day.